Congratulations, Pat. UCOR receives a $4.28 million funding agreement from the Government of Canada. Can you tell us, congratulations, why did the Canadian government decide to grant you this, this funding? Well, the Canadian government, as you know, is uh, very involved with critical uh, mineral processing, and they, they want to make sure they've got all the best-in-kind technology to drive forward here in the 21st century with um, you know green energy transition. A lot of talk recently about battery uh, metal technology, and um, they've been they've been watching the rare earth sector and looking to right, uh, make the right investments at the right time to move forward. As you know, we have our Rapid SX technology commercial demo plant in Kingston. Canadian government officials were there. They saw it. They liked what they saw. And um, subsequently, they put forth an award for processing light rare earth and $4.28 million. Uh, perfect. We'll use all of it to uh, continue to march towards commercialization. Jack Lipton earlier today commented on this news release. He thought it was substantial. He said, UCOR's dual, this is a sign of confidence, of dual government support for both the United States and the Canadian government also working together. And he thinks we should see a lot more of this. And he commented on your additional support from the U.S. Department of Defense. Would you like to comment on that? Yeah, you know, Jack is, uh, he's pretty sharp. So he realizes that the uh, US DOD uh, previously had funded us for a $4 million US program to process heavy rare earth. And uh, there's no processing of heavy rare earth to oxide level outside of China. The US DOD, very concerned about the um, um, industrial markets, the defense uh, needs, and put forth a program using, again, a like for our rapid SX technology, our Kingston demo plant. They've been there. They saw it. They, um, they really appreciate it. And uh, the Canadian side said, hey, you know, you've got the heavies going with the U.S. Let us take care of the light side. We'll fund the light processing because, as you know, both lights and heavies are needed to create permanent magnets and all the downstream that help, um, you know, everything from electric vehicles to wind energy and you name it. So, yes. A complimenting uh, dual government support here. Very, very well done. Yeah, so we we saw a strategic implica implications of this particular news. Again, we'd like to congratulate you. But also, um, this is about your technology demonstration and milestones moving forward. So with the focus on demonstrating the rapid SX technology, what are the key milestones and technical achievements UCOR aims to reach during this project? Well, we actually are going to get to purified uh, product. So, uh, you know, on the Canadian side, the uh, um, uh, Prasodinium, Neodymium, and, and Prasodium, Prasodium Neodymium, NDPR put together all of those uh, compounds. Uh, so all three that are needed for the magnet inputs for electrification, the, the purity levels needed for those particular products. So essentially you'll have qualified product that an OEM can look at, whether it's wind energy or Department of Defense or um, automotive, and they'll say, hey, there's a qualified product on a light wear side from the Canadian program that helps to uh, justify the next stages of commercialization. You've been a tremendous speaker, Pat, on collaboration, and sustainability, and the supply chain for North America in general. Can you talk to me about how this announcement, what kind of impact it's going to have on the North American supply chain? Well, you know, this is a critical uh, need, no matter uh, where it is in the Western world. We have up and coming resources that are out there in the rare earth space, and uh, they need a place to process and refine. They need a they need a, a bridge between the resource and then the metal and the magnet making. So this technology, which is ideally suited for westernization, and you've heard me speak before about the need to innovate. If you're going to take on the uh, the, the job of, of breaking the grip from China, let's do it in a very westernized way. So we've got the right technology here to be able to join the resources that are developing with the downstream that are uh, either magnet makers or metal makers and help create that bridge. So yeah, we're, we're in a very uh, pivotal spot. The US government realized it, the Canadian government realized it, and uh, we're gonna march forward and get this job done. One last question. Does this change your long-term objectives? Does it, does it make them faster, you know, or what kind of impact does this uh, announcement have? Or is this just keeping you on track, Pat? Uh, you know, it, it does a little of both. It, it does certainly keep us on track. But uh, when you're given that type of funding, both from the Canadian side and the U.S. side, essentially what they're saying is, please run thousands of hours on your plant and and uh, develop the commercial metrics that allow you to plug into a full-size commercial plant. 
And, uh, you know, if you didn't have that funding, you might be coming up a little light and saying, well, you know, let, let's run, you know, 500 hours on the plant instead of running thousands of hours on the plant. Let, let's run one feedstock instead of two feedstocks. So uh, it, it allows you to uh, really vet out all the things that need to be vetted out. And as you know, my background's automotive. And when you're developing a tier one supply plant for automotive or any other OEM, you've got to make sure that your robust commercial nature of your development plan is, is on point. This funding from the Canadian government and previously from the U.S. government allows us to march forward and stay on track, but really make sure we do the job thoroughly. So, Pat, um, I think in addition to UCOR receiving this $4.28 million funding, I'd like to draw our audience attention back to what you've been doing in Louisiana and the strategic process that you're, and groundwork that you're laying down there. Yeah, yeah certainly. Um, so the demonstration plant in Kingston, that only uh, gets its full, I guess, breadth of, of, of execution when you actually put it to commercial use. So um, we located a building, many buildings a year ago and bedded it down to one, uh, narrowed it down through due diligence to one in Alexandria, Louisiana. And that particular building that we have is 80,800 square feet. As you build it, I actually process 7,500 tons of um, rare earth oxide because of the space that's in there. So the rapid SX technology we have in Kingston will be plugged into Louisiana. So we have the uh, engineers from Metchem in New England working on uh, the layout of the process for the plant. We've uh, engaged with Orbital Engineering out of Pittsburgh. They build big energy plants. They too are working on the development going forward. And you know the engineers will talk, Tracy, about all the uh, different rare earth lines that are heavy, uh, rare earth, light rare earth, and how it will ramp up from 2,000 to 5,000 to 7,500 tons. I quite frankly look at the plant and I go, that's 7,500 ton plant. That's actually 3.8 million electric vehicles. And it's also uh, 7,500 uh, Alliad X offshore wind turbines that would power 120 million homes. There are 140 million homes in the US. These government programs are important because when you start with the government program, they really wanna see you get through to full commercialization. On the US side, the program, it's a $4 million program. There's an additional uh, part of this uh, OTA, other transaction agreement that allows you to fund further into Louisiana. From the Canadian side, they're funding the lights, but they're looking at us saying, hey, we'd love to have plant number two, SMC number two, set up in Canada. So it, it, it's really a smart way to work with the governments to get done what needs to happen. And there's a, your Louisiana update, but the Canadian government have their sights on, um, let's take it a step further. Let's build that second plant back in Canada. I'd like to congratulate you on your collaboration and your work with both the U.S. and Canadian government. And of course, for anybody out there who would like to learn more about this deal and other UCOR deals, please go to their website. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Tracy.